Hi, my name is Katie Chamberick. You may know me from Glaze and Paint Downtown Manitowoc. Today I'm here on behalf of the Roar West Art Museum and we're going to talk about conceptual art. So, conceptual art is a little different than the typical art that we are normally used to. Now it's not just painting and sculpting like with paint or with clay, it's a little bit different. Now it's a little hard to define because conceptual art is not really what we typically think of, as I had mentioned. So, a lot of the times it has to do with other materials, not just the typical materials. Today we're going to talk about two pieces that are at the Raw West Art Museum. They're on loans from Art Bridges. So this one here, we have a picture of. So this is actually candy. It's a little hard to tell in the picture, but it's candy piece. And it is by Felix Gonzalez Torres. And it's untitled, but it was made in Los Angeles. And then we also have this symbols piece, which is really unique piece as well, because this one actually makes sound. It's on a timer and it goes through, and usually about every eight to 12 minutes, it makes sound automatically. So this is a really interesting piece. This one's by Terry Adkins and it's made out of the symbols, um, and it's called Native Sun Circuit. And something to you, the person who's viewing it, it might mean something completely different to them. And that's what art is all about. So even if you're not painting it on a canvas, you can still convey emotions. And, ex and especially in this time with COVID, you might be thinking of a lot of different emotions, and you can convey your emotions through this kind of art too. So, we do have these little kits that you may have picked up. I'm just gonna go through kind of what's in this kit. First and foremost, you have this little booklet here. This tells a little bit about conceptual art and it tells about the pieces too. And it'll have these prompts that we're going to go through as well. So you have the booklet. We have some colored pencils. So if you're feeling any different ideas and things, you can jot those down right into your booklet. We have some starbursts. Now first and foremost, this is going to be for art. So we're not just going to open these and eat them right away. We're going to use them for art first, but if you do want to eat them after, make sure you wash your hands first. That way you don't have germs on your hands and touching your candy if you're going to eat it. We also have little symbols. We have a few pieces of the actual candy from this candy piece that's in the Rar West. So this is the actual candy that the artist created this piece with. And then you also have some found objects. So we're going to talk a little bit more about found objects later. But everybody's kit are going to have a little bit of a different piece. So we have some styrofoam balls, we may have some of these little wood pieces, or little wood sticks. Some of the kits have like these little beads in them or some of these little metal rings, some puzzle pieces, more wood pieces. So everybody's is a little different. Each kit should have about two pieces of those in as well. So everybody's kit's going to be a little different. So if you want to take a look at it, this booklet first here. So first we have some little prompts here and we also do have these QR, QR codes here too. So at any time when you're making this art, you can always scan this code and share it with us on Facebook too. So this will share it with the RAR West and then you can show us kind of what you're working on because it's really hard for us to be away from you. We still want to see what you're doing. So please share it with us at any time, okay? So we're going to go on to the symbols piece first here. So we're going to focus on sound in this piece here. So we do have these little symbols. Now we're going to take them out of the little plastic here. Now when we think of art, we don't automatically think of sound. Because if you're walking past a sculpture or a painting, typically it doesn't make a lot of sound at you, usually. But with these, you can make little sounds and also you can make sounds on different pieces too. So you can jot some ideas down here. So first things first, we're going to find other pieces that are going to work with these symbols that maybe we can make a piece that has sound. Maybe not, that's okay if yours doesn't make sound either. It's completely up to you what you want to convey with your piece. So when I say found objects, 
I mean like these kind of random different pieces that may be in your bag, but you can go around your house and find other things too. Now first, you wanna check with your parents, make sure not to take anything that they don't want you touching, and also make sure that you're able to put it back when you're finished with it, okay? So you don't wanna just take it without asking permission first, okay? But maybe you find keys, or maybe you find um, different items in your kitchen, like pots and pans, or different items there. It's completely up to you. But after you find your pieces, it's all about kind of thinking things through. How are these going to relate to each other in your piece? And then you can kind of jot some notes down. Maybe you draw a little sketch of what you want your painting or your sculpture to be here. You paint it out first and then you can make it happen with your pieces. So sometimes art is all about planning first and kind of going from there. So you can always see how they relate to each other. You can experiment and see if they make noise connecting to each other. Maybe if you put this hanging it up from something instead of setting it on something. You can see if things connect. Maybe you use tape to connect them or other pieces. You can use glue, but make sure that they're pieces that are okay to be glued together, not that you have to put them back, okay? So, but keep that in mind, you can use glue if that's okay with your parents. There isn't glue in your kit, but maybe you have some glue at home. There are no wrong answers in this, this kind of art. If that's what your art makes you feel and you want your art to look like that, it's completely up to you because you are the artist, okay? So next we're going to move on a little bit here. We're going to go right into our candy piece. So again, that's by Felix Gonzalez Torres. And he did not title this piece, so it's called Untitled. And when you're working with your pieces, too, if you want to title your pieces, you can do that as well. Well, you don't have to if you don't want to. That's completely up to you. And also, it's about experimenting. So if you make something and you don't exactly like how it looks, you can always change it or you can start over. And that's okay, because that's what art can be. So, like I said before, this is the actual candy that is in the piece. Now, the piece itself, it's just a bunch of these pieces of candy here. Usually it's around 50 pounds of the candy and then it's in a longer shape that's on the floor. When you go see the piece, it's actually encouraged that you pick one of these pieces up and you can actually take it and eat it. Now that's usually not what you can do with art, but that is what conceptual art can be if that's what you want it to be. So today we have these little starbursts here. So it's completely up to you if you want to use just the starburst or if you want to use a mixture of this candy or you can even use some of the found objects, you can do that too. So completely up to you, but we're going to do a little bit of art with this candy. Again, if you want to eat this candy after, please wash your hands first or you can even use some gloves if you have gloves there too. Now you can leave them in the wrappers you can take them out of the wrappers. I'm gonna take some of mine out of the wrappers, but if you wanna leave them in and maybe stack them with other pieces, you could do that. Otherwise, we can take them out. Now, the nice thing about Starburst is that they're kind of malleable. So that means that you can kind of sculpt them like clay. So they're a little harder than a clay, so you just kinda of wanna work them with your fingers and then they'll get easier to use kind of as a sculpting tool. And even if you wanted to, you can incorporate the wrappers. I know I've seen some different people, they like to fold the wrappers into different artworks too. You could do that too. You don't have to just discard those wrappers. So I'm gonna unwrap another piece here. So again, I'm gonna use these kind of as a clay and there's really no wrong answers, as we said before. This kind of art is all about transforming different spaces and just going out into your environment and getting inspired and changing your space. So you can use what you have. And you can always make different shapes. Again, you can kind of experiment with it a little bit, but you can also 
Again, sketch it down first if you have an idea. You can draw it out and then you can go from there. I'm gonna make mine almost kind of like a, a clay or a Play-Doh. You can roll it out. Also, I'm just gonna see what I'm feeling today. I'm gonna roll that one out and then I'm gonna roll this one out. See, and as you can see, I was kind of working with it more and more, and it's easier to work with the more you kind of play with it a little bit. And just experiment, and maybe these two want to go together here. Again, no wrong answers, and you can just experiment with things. I'm just kind of seeing how I feel about things. Oh, maybe I found this found object of mine here. Again, it's all about experimenting and seeing how you feel. And maybe I want to find some string or even floss if you don't have string, if you have floss and you can always kind of hang this up and hang it from somewhere. In conceptual art, once it is finished, the nice thing is that sometimes it's inside, sometimes it's an outdoor space. So if you want, I wouldn't suggest putting your candy outside, the birds might eat it. But if you want to make a piece to go outside, maybe you want to put something in your garden. That's fun too. So again, completely up to you. Now conceptual art, we learned a lot about it today. But the main thing to remember is that art doesn't have to just be painting and it doesn't just have to be sculpting or anything just at a museum sometimes. Sometimes art is just how you feel and then you can make it with different found objects or other things as well. So just remember, we do have these little QR codes here and we would love to see what you're making with these kits. Please remember to just scan that there and share it with us on Facebook. Have a great day.